intro <laughs> music here on the independent or the indie <laughs> pod pod. I don't even know the name of my own show. Welcome everybody to the Indie Pod podcast. I'm your host, Super Joe Pardo. And this week, not only do I have a bunch of updates, uh, maybe a little bit of news uh, to share about uh, Icon 6, uh, which is September 24th to the 26th, 2020. Uh, I have, I'm looking forward to talking with my guest this week. Uh, but before we get to the who the guest is sitting to my left uh, or your right, uh, I just wanted to throw out there that if you are interested in sponsoring the Indie Pod podcast, you should go check out IndiePodCon.com slash partners. Check out the media kit and get all the hot juicy details about how you can yes uh, how I, this is me pretending to hold the phone uh <laughs> how you can go get your information about how you can become a sponsor of not only this but indie podcon and upcoming events what's up tom t uh how you having a great night i'm having uh, a better night than yesterday for anyone who doesn't know i was in the hospital yesterday uh my son uh around well actually like all day from like the morning was having like he was like wheezing and stuff uh turns out um well we went to the hot well my wife took him to the doctor by like three o'clock he was going in the ambulance to go to the hospital because apparently he was having uh, extreme trouble breathing and uh it was not it was not fun i've never had to experience that yet and and uh I'm, i'm sure this probably will not be the last time but maybe knock on wood it'll be the last time ever having to experience that we go to the hospital we're there for six hours and uh and you know we uh basically found out a whole lot of nothing (laughs) at the hospital um and and then left uh to be told hey well you can go to the doctor again tomorrow and it's like oh cool like (laughs) <laughs> I'm glad we sat here for about six plus hours, uh, and I'm sure there's going to be a healthy bill in the in the mail coming our way with when we got like no real information out of it. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So it turns out he has uh, asthma, and I guess with the weather change, that's a thing. Um, so we're you know he's still like clicking away whenever he breathes, and he he's still breathing a little uh, on the quick and heavy side, unfortunately. So. Hopefully, uh, in the next day or two, they did give him a nebulizer and they told him to start taking a leg rest for kids. Uh, and that's a knock at my door because my, <laughs> my daughter, I don't know if you could pick that up in the mic, but that's because my daughter's outside the door now. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, so that's that that was our night. Um, and and yeah, so anyway, hopefully he continues to be all right. At least we had the nebulizer now and we, we kind of know we, we set up uh, a, a meeting with the allergist doctor thing. Uh, I think in like a week or two. So, yeah. So anyway, uh, this week, my guest uh, runs, has run several podcasts. I think the total is six podcasts, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it is. Total wow. six podcasts. Yes. And uh, he runs two currently, I believe. Uh, one is called Podrect, and the other one I don't know off the top of my head what the name of that one is. If you could help me out there, sir. That's a pause for dramatic effect. That's the name of the show. That's the name of the show. Yeah, that's. Oh, the, wow, the, okay. Na- I didn't know if we were just. <laughs> no, it was the the, the not the, the national podcast the post month has the thirty day challenge to try to do one every single day, and that's the pause for dramatic effect. It's a little five minute oh, audio drama that I put I kind of pulled together and oh that's awesome I'm, I'm gonna have to go check that out uh everybody give it up for kyle bondo Woo! Woo! <clears throat> what's up clay groves brent basham tom tate everyone drop in the chat where you are from uh where you're listening from right now i'd love to love to give you a shout out um so that asthma stuff is no joke that's something that uh i I don't know. I've never had it. I've never had to deal with that. I didn't have it until I was 11. And then I had a bronchiospasm. It put me in the hospital for three days. You do the nebulizer and all that stuff. And the doctor goes, well, you got asthma. And then like, what do you do about it? You're like, you just take the inhaler when you get the breathing problems. And by the way, every season is going to be your worst nightmare. So you just kind of, you kind of live with it. So my dad was like, well, I'll tell you what, and put me in a track. 
and because he put me in a track, makes my lungs a little bit bigger, and it slowly, you know, slowly goes away over time. You know, enough to uh, that it, you know the military was okay with it. So you can <laughs> grow out of it. You can get yourself stronger. It doesn't necessarily go away. The seasons change, but yeah, it's got to. Once you kind of figure out figure out the right balance, you'll be fine. Um. Well, thank you for your service, by the way, for anybody oh. who who doesn't know. Uh, Kyle, uh, Kyle, why don't, why don't you give some background about yourself and how you got into podcasting? Let's see. When I was five years old, no. <laughs> well, you probably might have been recording <laughs> like I was when I was about eight years old, seven years old. Well, I was like, into the mics. I was like those the, the kid who uh, loved the Saturday morning cartoons. You take the tape deck and you record the theme songs, all your favorite shows, just so you could hear them later. I think I remember recording Superman 2 on cassette tape. It takes about eight cassette tapes front and back to get all of Superman 2. So I recorded like the whole movie on cassette tape. No idea why, but that's it. The, it starts way, way young. So you have this like really, really like deep wanting to record things or play with audio. That's kind of where it comes from. But uh, for me, it was how do you get into podcasting is you start off as a listener. I think it's sort of how it all starts. We all start kind of like that way. At first, it was music, getting different music podcasts. And then it turns into, I fell in love with a podcast called The Galactic Water Cooler. And it was three people sitting in their bedroom talking about Battlestar Galactica, the reboot. And because I was so in love with the reboot, you just had to hear what they're going to say next. And they would they would talk about the shows, the different characters and Starbuck and Boomer and all that. And then the show ended. Sci-fi canceled it after what season four, and they didn't know what to do with themselves. So they became the they sort of the Galactica water cooler. They became the Galactic water cooler, which is kind of cool, but <laughs> it didn't last very long. So I was going, well, how do you continue that? How do you create a show that doesn't, you know, doesn't just end like they ended it after two hundred some odd episodes? And I started thinking about. I was really interested in doing something like that but I was afraid to put the voice onto the microphone. So that, uh, that became kind of the, 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 the what do you call it, the journey to kind of figure out, you know, how do you build this thing? You know, the technology and all the stuff behind it. And I was writing a blog about, so we, we fast forward. I, uh, I was a race director and a race promoter for mountain bike racing. And I had a blog because no race directors were teaching anything about anything. So I was like, well, you know, I'm going to do it myself. And I wrote three years worth of blog posts. And someone said, you know, I don't have time to read your blog. And it was like, it was like, you know, peanut butter met chocolate. I was like, all those podcasting things I was thinking about <laughs> and all this content I had created. It was like, oh, there it is. There's the, there's the mix. And so I launched the, mer the Merchants of Dirt. Or as uh, Dave Jackson calls it, you know, now open for Metallica in the Thunderdome. It's Merchants of Dirt. He yeah, has like a rock band. <laughs> and I started this, this thing where I just get on the mic. I had this fake co-host called Mr. Murphy of the Mr. Murphy's Law Office of Murphy, Murphy, and Murphy. And I would talk about all the bad things that would happen to your race and how to fix them. It's pretty much how it happened. 50 episodes over to that of, you know, coming up with different ideas of you know, trails and and permits and uh, uh, all the business stuff because race directors have no business skills whatsoever. So I did that for almost what, almost two years. And from that, I launched another one called Get Lost Racing, which is about endurance sports, which simply I took these sports that no one ever heard of and found out that there was, you know, I knew because of the community you exist inside an endurance sports world, you know, these weird, these weird events where 50 people show up and that's like the whole community, crazy stuff like road gaining. You're like road gaining. That's like the thing for your hair. No road grading was where you hide a bunch of flags in the woods and send people out to find them with a map and a compass. And that's it. And they can find oh, it in any, in any order. That like GP, what's that GPS thing? That oh yeah. Do? But it's, it's map and compass though. You get no technology. Leave your phone in your car. Uh, okay. Yeah. So all those kind of really cool kind of sports. And I didn't advertise it. I didn't market it. And it outperformed Merchants of Dirt, which was really depressing. <laughs> 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 and I hit episode 50 of Merchants of Dirt. And I decided I didn't want to do it anymore. I was kind of bored. I wanted to try something else. And so I just let it go. And it started off with I'd skip a month. And then I'd skip three months. 
and then I skipped six months and then I just didn't go back. Mm. That's why I pod faded it. And some people started asking, Hey, what happened to it? Hey, maybe you should go back to it. Maybe you should do this. And I came up with this interesting idea of pod fader and pod fader was my third podcast where I started talking about how do you go back to a podcast that you let go? And it started off as a joke. It turned into kind of an AA meeting for podcasters, which turned into the nine steps back to podcasting. I created 17 episodes of if you are a pod fader, you know, it's almost like, you know, it's okay. You can podcast, you can podcast again. And I like this big hug. And I almost like approached it like I was tin, you know, Tony Robbins, uh, you know, come on back to podcasting. You know, the first step is, is acceptance. And the second step is anger. And, you know, you went through the whole thing and I launched that. And from that, I launched way in the back was a meetup here in my local town. And we were, I was doing a monthly meetup where two or three people show up at a time and a couple of people show up here and there. And my friend, Tim, Tim Bryan showed up and didn't stop showing up. He just kept showing up and I kept teaching anyone I know. And he kept listening. And suddenly we had this friendship going back together where we decided that all these conversations we were having while teaching each other, you know, kind of this whole podcasting thing that, uh, hey, you know what? This should be a podcast. And that was the emphasis for PodRec, where PodRec is all those shows that exist on Apple iTunes that you know haven't had an episode in nine, ten years, you know, all those pod faded shows. And of course, we came up with different words, right? If you had a show for like 13 episodes is a pod fade, but what happens if you only have one episode? That's a pod flash. And if you have a show that you had for a year, but you let go, that's called a pod wreck because it's still being, you're still paying for it or you're still hosting it. It still exists. And it's got like, it's in the top 10 and it doesn't go away, but it hasn't had an episode like in five years. That's a pod wreck. So we had these like levels of variations. We came up with all this stuff. We, on our website, I think we have like 50 different definitions of different words where we said, hey, we take this word, we put the word pod in front of it. What do we get? <laughs> yeah, we got a whole, a whole dictionary. We did like the 12 pod words for Christmas last year for the, with that idea. But pod rec became that. It was another podcast about podcasting. Only from our point of view, it's the how do you survive your show? Kind of taking that pod fader and the teaching aspect of it and putting it together. How do you survive your show? Mm -hmm. What's the things that, that people get tr stuck on all the time? And that's where we're at now. And together in the background, we have a little tiny company called GagglePod that we just, you know, we teach people how to, how to fix their shows. And we kind of approach it from a designer's point of view rather than a audio engineering point of view. Mm. So. Yeah, I think sometimes people get uh, lost in the in the sauce there about that because they uh, they get hung up on the on the tech side, they, and, and you know, or the the website side, or the you know, what are people gonna think uh, side that they don't get things you know done and moving. And and here, uh, Brent Basham, T uh, Tom Tate, both uh, pod faders and 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 pod Rex actually. Uh, I, I think the term is great. I, I think or both terms, I should say the, the pod fade, excuse me. And the, the pod rec. Um, yeah. Tom has pod wrecked and, and it's, <laughs> but it's, e it's easy to do. And the, for the longer you, I, like what I've found is the longer you sit away from the, uh, from the show, the less likely you are to want to go back to it. Be, like it just, yeah. because it's like, Oh no, like, how do I get back in that that creative state, that mindset? That how do I feel comfortable about talking about it again, or getting like getting in front of the camera? In my case, because I, I pretty much record all my podcasts in front of a camera at this point. Um, you know how do I how do I do all that? And it and it's just so the further it takes, the, like the bigger the hurdle gets. It just grows and grows. And and Brent Bashan is saying, "Do you even edit, bro?" And the answer to me, my answer to that is no, I do not edit. I, I, I gave that up once I had my first kid and that going on, get close to four years ago. So, uh, but I, I put in my hours before that. I promise you, I wish I had all of those hours back, uh, in the, at the end of the day, but, um, depends on, I think it depends on the show. When it comes to editing, it depends on the show. A lot of times the, the kind of controversial, the, the conversational part of it, is is a lot more interesting to have the ums and the ahs and the gaps and if you're doing something more polished educational and because we're i've been doing audio drama lately with pause for dramatic effect 
which is my experiment. I've got two others in the pipeline, but this one, you have to be very, very clear about your editing. You have to cut and put, and there's all, if you oversee the, I use addition. I have this, like, it almost looks like, uh, it looks like a musical script for like Beethoven. It's like, as it goes up and down, there's special effects and voices and all that stuff. Hmm. So, yeah. So, um, you know, Anthony's saying, I think the ROI becomes a factor for some. I, I would definitely agree the amount of time and effort. I mean, there's a reason why I don't edit, right? It's because it, ta it takes a lot more time uh, and patience to, to, to edit uh, versus just putting in the reps, getting better at speaking on the mic, getting great guests like Kyle over here to be a great guest and not necessarily need to like, oh, you know, this person uh did this thing that like no one else ever did and it's like but they can't talk on a mic to save their life uh <laughs> for more than like 10 seconds at a time and then they're just like no i have the reverse uh, problem <laughs> uh, yeah okay cool <laughs> you know we like i'm glad you cured cancer but go take <laughs> yo take some of that cancer curing money and go go learn how to talk on a mic you know get some lessons or something because you're gonna be on lit you know late night with Jimmy Fallon and and Colbert like you're gonna be on all these shows go take some talking lessons I told this to to Dan Morris so I think as a podcaster's kit when we did his interview yes I, I talked about uh, uh, I have the opposite problem is I don't know when to stop talking. So because Tim and I, we were remote, we remote our show. So he's, you know, he's just down the street from me, but very rarely do we actually record in the same place. So we use Squadcast to go back and forth, which is pretty convenient. But because we're looking at each other, he has to, he's got hand, we've developed this hand signal. So hand signal number one is when he's, when he's talking, I have a point, I have to do this. So I stop interrupting because that's num my number one faux pas is I'll, I interrupt all the time because my brain's moving faster than my mouth or he'll go like this like hey it's time to wrap it up you're talking too long you know or something like so we have these things so he's to, never doing this to you <laughs> no he's like he's going okay wrap it up it's time you, you said enough so we've had these these kind of these hand signals which as a co-host it's kind of cool to have that and if you ever see some of these uh these live shows when they record in front of a, an audience, you'll, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I've asked them before and they says, do you have any, like, what are your cues when you know it's time to talk some way? And some of them will say, well, when the other guy leans forward to the microphone, like he'll lean way back. And when it's his time to talk, he'll lean forward. And that's when, you know, he's got something to say. So there's like, everyone's kind of got their, like their strange little subliminal or, or un, you know, the, the subconscious way of doing it with Tim. It's like, dude, it's you know <laughs> it's just very blunt about it's my it. turn yeah it's my turn and i've been very conscious that i was like tim we gotta you gotta tell me man you gotta tell me when it's time and he's like okay i'll tell you so what's up danny welcome uh welcome to the indie pod podcast uh so does if does anybody have any questions about pod fading how to avoid pod fading what you know a specific situation uh love to answer get some of your questions answered um, while we're, while we're, while you're getting those questions asked, uh, I just wanted to quickly, uh, remind everybody that September 24th to the 26th Indie pod con comes back to Swedesboro, New Jersey, just outside of Philadelphia. It's 20 minutes from the Philadelphia airport. If you haven't been, it's super easy to get there. Uh, it, it's, it's like I said, it's about 20 minutes from the airport. Uh, you can save 10% off your ticket right now. Uh, you can use promo code IPP uh, if you go to IndiePodCon.com slash register. Um, there is uh, there's actually so one of the things I did, I think last week, I think it was last week. I'm not I'm not positive. I'm, I'm actually checking right now. To, <laughs> so make sure. OK, so, yeah. So last week I actually opened up the course for monetize your your podcast course the or the course, the tickets for Montage Your Podcast course that takes place on Thursday, the 24th uh, at the hotel. Uh, so me and uh, Sam and I, Samantha Riley and I, uh, ran it this year. Kyle, you were you were in attendance with your wife at that. Did you I was. Did you, did you enjoy it? Yeah, I think the, the one thing that, uh, that I liked about that was so many different ways to, to monetize that I, I hadn't really thought about. 
Mm. A lot of times there's a lot of a lot of different products and everything. But I think the the biggest takeaway, or actually two, was one that uh, your your co-host with that uh, her name was Samantha Riley. Samantha said that uh, you should get a team. Yeah, I think I think she even chastised you to definitely get some team people on your on your team. Yes, you can't be an army, <laughs> can't be an army of one forever, Joe. No, <laughs> that was one. And the other one was, well, you can't make any money if you have nothing to sell. And I thought that was a that was like a, oh yeah, that would definitely. <laughs> now you probably could with Patreon, right? That maybe that's maybe that's an exception. But that's still right? something to sell, right? Yeah. Like you're selling the added content. You're selling goodwill of like, hey, I'm not going to give you anything extra. Send me a dollar a month. Exactly. And I'll be okay. Like, no you bonus know? content. No extra episodes. None of the back. You know the back the the how it's made stuff. You're just like, you know, just send me money. That doesn't work. You actually have to have something that of value to trade for the, as I think Cliff Ravencraft called them. What is it? Ra uh, Ravencraft. I Ravencraft. Like <laughs> Ravenclaw. Ravencraft. See, I, I wanted to say Ravenclaw and yeah. Ravenscraft. Ravencleft. Super, uh, super cleft. <laughs> now I owe him a hundred dollars. Uh, <laughs> he called them gratitude bucks. He called them gratitude bucks is that people want to actually pay you that stuff. So that though of uh, in that class, that was the two things was you have something to sell, have a team or two things. But even before that was the, if you're going to podcast to monetize, do that before you start your podcast, because mm. a podcast for fun is different than a podcast as a business. Yep. They're two different, totally different missions and goals. And I think uh, your class definitely doubles down on that thinking. Mm. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate it. That was the third year in a row we had run it or fourth year in a row we had run it. Um, and I mean, every year I get so much out of it myself because there's there's always things that I didn't know because people people are doing different things with their podcast. And uh, this is the first year where we're actually calling it the Monetize Your, Your Podcast course because uh, we're also going to be doing a Podcasting 101 course in the morning. So uh, the idea is, is that we, like basically we took the Elevate Your Podcast course and we've split it in two so we can just focus on these two two areas of like let's get your podcast better sounding better hosted better you know website that kind of stuff versus like let's just focus on the money show me the money uh and that's so i'm, I'm really looking forward to that so that ticket's available right now if you go to the indiepodcon.com slash register uh philly podcaster meetup november 17th noon to 3 p.m rsvp your spot please there's only uh, i think the total is like 70 available and like there's already over 20 people registered so uh you absolutely please rsvp um you know we're we are the primary sponsor of the philly podcaster meetups it's a meetup.com group that has over like 500 some people in it uh and we are the the proud sponsors of making that happen so uh yeah if you go register um we are going to have a speaker at least one speaker i'm i might have two or three more speakers as well uh matthew passy uh is one of the speakers that will be there in attendance and speaking and i think we might have a few others i gotta get that lot thing because that's like next week so uh <laughs> next sunday yeah next not this sunday but next sunday at noon to three o'clock and then afterwards i think we're going to go maybe go to dave and busters to like get dinner and uh watch the eagles take on the patriots and hopefully win i hope i think no i think they'll win i think it'll, i think they'll pull it off um take the eagles, real, that one. i'm sorry what i take the eagles on that one uh, yes <laughs> thank you uh and and for anyone who doesn't know the uh, mapcon 5 vlog is out now if you haven't watched it yet, it's like 30 minutes long go to indiepodcon.com slash vlog have you checked it out kyle i haven't got to see it yet oh my god oh. Uh, really yeah, oh, i know wow. I you think probably in it too you uh i believe I think you are. I'm pretty sure. Well, Tim is definitely in it. Um, yeah, Tim is definitely I'm, in it. He is definitely in it. He's I, the more photogenic one. He oh, okay. in it and in it he is quite funny. Uh so yeah. And if you're so if you're watching this uh outside of the group, out of the side of the Facebook group that has been exploding with people, we're already at like 650 people now. It's Ooh. it's crazy. It's growing very rapidly. Uh, IndiePodcon.com slash group. We have a question from Tom T. He says, my format takes too long to produce. Started the show with one child, and now I have three. 
<laughs> oh man, should I change my format? And he's like, format is how he wrote it, but oh, star format. Um, Brent says, yep, don't have any more kids. <laughs> Tom says, I, I don't know how to solve that problem. Unlike some progressive digital dads, no one ever gave me the talk. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Oh, uh, so yeah. So going back to the question, should I change my formate? Because my formate might be a little too long to produce. <laughs> Kyle, I'll let you start with uh, start answering this one. Well, I love the. I'm gonna. I, I'm a. Uh, I'm a zealot of the Church of, of 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 Dave Jackson, and I love his where he says that your show is a recipe. It's not set in stone. So I would say, give it a try. Why not? I mean, you could change it for ten episodes, and if you don't like it, or your audience doesn't like it, change it back. And the great thing about podcasting is, is your audience kind of doesn't want you to change, but kind of does. It's this weird kind of thing where you're not going to please everybody all the time. So give it a try. Experiment with a couple of different formats. Maybe even do, throw it in every other episode and try to change some things around. Try, experiment, play around. I mean, the worst thing that can happen is it doesn't work. But then you'll know it didn't work and you can go back. And that's what I think uh, when it comes to these kind of things is life is going to change all the time. And a lot of times in we back to the kind of the pod fader thing, half the reason why people pod fade is because their life changed or something happened that their show doesn't really resemble the way they started to where they're at now. And all you have to do is, well, what'll make it exciting again? What's the thing with the change of experiment that will, that will resonate with your audience that maybe will make you more interested in it because energy equals passion. So if, if now you have three kids, well, now it's a now it's a three kids show, and maybe there are some people out there who started you with one kid and now have three kids also. So there might be some people following you along with the with that format. Give it a try, experiment, see what happens, you know, and then ask ask people. Yeah, yeah. So I I would definitely resonate uh, that answer totally because. Uh, you know, there's, there is no rules when it comes to podcasting as Dave, you know, Dave has well pointed out over the years. Uh, and you know, I think that, I mean, in my own experience, like I've changed the format of my show, uh, dreamers podcast, I've changed the name of my show dreamers podcast. And now back to dreamers podcast after two years of, of, of absence from that name. And that, um, even though the format didn't really change the, the vibe changed a bit. The the content changed a little bit, and how I delivered it was was changed a little bit. Um, and I think that you know when it comes to uh, you know producing it, I think it's it, look it's better to to make movement than make nothing, right? I, and I and that's why like the show, right? Like this show that we're doing right now live on, on Facebook, uh, which has been getting jumping between like seven and like 11 viewers at any given second, uh, is way easier to produce. Uh, thanks. Well, thanks to some of the, you know, the tools that I'm using at the moment, but it's way easier to produce. It's way easier to get in people's head, in, in people's heads, in people's hands, uh, because they're watching it, like probably mostly from their phones. Maybe they're, their computers or whatever but it makes the you know by making the process easier and taking down some of the boundaries of like there's no music in the beginning right there's no music at the end in fact the the um the, this show going back to when i first started this show i mean uh when did i start in the second year of of mapcon i started the show it never had music because the whole idea was is that it was simple to produce we jumped on we had a conversation and we we called it a day right and now with the tools available we're able to like take live questions and and be you know have people involved with the chat that's going on and it doesn't have to be so you know documentary of like well, Kyle, what did you, you know, tell tell me more about this and how did you got in the podcast and what it all means to you? Like it can be some of that, you know, but it doesn't have to be. And I think answering questions and getting more input and getting all that, it, it really helps. I mean, it helps me I, for sure. I, and I, hopefully I, it helps somebody else as well, but yeah, don't be afraid to, to change things up and, and try different things. And, um, and if, if your show is going to be that heavy to produce, you know, set a limit, 
like if you're not willing to produce the show in a different way where it's like oh well i just look i get on the mic maybe there's a song in the beginning maybe there's an outro that i just tack on i don't edit it um okay so it's still going to take me like an hour maybe two hours by the time you write the post for it and the show you know like show notes and do all that stuff like okay maybe i need to set a limit and say okay i'm going to do 10 this year and these are what the 10 episodes are going to look like and that and it's a season and that's it like and then you it makes it sets the bar lower um but at the same time can also make it higher because it's like okay at 10 episodes like i only have to produce an episode every like four weeks or something you know four or five weeks I come out with one a little over a month, but if you high produce it, so you're taking like the, the hour you have here and the hour you have there and you, you put it all together, mix it all up and you get yourself something that people are like, wow, that sounds, it sounds really great. I'm learning stuff. I wish they put out more. And now all of a sudden people are like, get that itch. Like, Oh, I want, I want more of that. Can I, you got more of that, more of that Kyle, you got more of that stuff. Uh, I like know. that idea. I yeah, like exactly. Idea. So it, it, you know, it creates that FOMO. I mean, look, TV does it all the time, right? They TV shows they, they're not they don't run fifty two weeks and then start. You know, oh, I mean, soap operas are a different story. You know, live news feeds are a different story. But but even look at live news. Like live news is set up so that the production value doesn't have to take forever. Like you know, it doesn't take like days of work and production to get the news up. You know, it's how do we get it as quick as we can. Um, and and i think that you just need to find that that happy medium or again set the limit so that it becomes like hey we're and and leading up to that putting it out there like hey i'm doing 10 episodes of the show that people enjoyed but it just takes me too long to do and at least then people can expect it and get hyped for for what's to come you have to kind of like break apart your process too and look about how why is it taking you so long to produce you start going through it and say okay i'm i'm writing I'm writing show notes that are almost exact transcript of what I'm saying. Stop doing that. Start doing outlines, do a bullets, yeah. sh shrink it up, have a template. The one thing that saved me more time than anything is having a template where I have all my header tags. I'm using WordPress to do my web websites. And so I have all my header tags, everything all built in correctly. All I have to do is just fill in the blank. It's just basically categories. I fill in the blanks. And what's even better is when I'm doing uh, the description, and I'm using, I use Lipson for, for most of my podcasts, is I can do a post in WordPress with all my stuff. I cut and paste it right into the description in the, there's like another tab, there's like a, there's like a little bracket inside Lipson that gives you the code base behind it. You can cut it right out of WordPress and drop it right into Lipson and ta-da, your show notes are done. And I don't have to retype anything thing so you could do a lot of these like shortcuts little kind of thing i use evernote all the time to get ideas i'm sitting there in the doctor's office i got oh there's an idea oh here's an idea here's an idea uh, don't forget ideas um, yep. these kind of things help you out and just like joe is saying maybe your show's too long if it takes too long i mean half a show is half the time to to produce so make it shorter play with a shorter one and this is the one thing i like that you said that really kind of struck out to me is on netflix all their shows now, I don't know who decided this. Maybe it was Game of Thrones that made this happen. Everything's 10. Everything's 10. It's 10 episodes and that's it. And the end of the 10 episodes, you're like, oh, what? Because you just binge watched all that stuff. I don't make a show only 10 episodes long and then give it a couple months and kind of re energize yourself to do a round two. Yeah, as long as you're you're doing the marketing and turning those episodes into a lot of like marketing to push people to the you know to keep that that hype train going, um, yeah, I I, I like uh, let me see. Uh, Brent said, uh, put the kids on the show, Tom, and then you can recruit them later to edit. Uh, like great <laughs> idea. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, so Nick, uh, Nick, what's up, Nick? How are you doing, Nicky man? G. Yeah, he said, uh, now that I started my own business, I am much more stretched for time with most of my creative juices going to promoting my business. I'm just trying to find the sweet spot to evolve and stay consistent with the podcast. Um, yeah, I, like, look, I I, uh, I haven't produced an episode of Dreamers podcast in a couple. Well, actually, since MapCon just had like that weekend, I, I did. I pumped out three episodes right before like the day before MapCon started. And then I staggered the releases, but um, now it's go like to, like 
yesterday was day was week two that um since i had released something and i just this weekend released the fact that the show was going back to from business with super joe pardo to to dreamers podcast and i have yet to actually sit down and record an episode probably like an explanation episode if nothing else um you know i i think that you know nick with your show i uh i think that you know there's a lot of room there for you to just talk about what you got going on in your mind and like opening up about the journey that you have that you have going on with it and the struggles that you're having with going on with the business and not necessarily worrying about the editing or maybe even the production value to a certain extent but just you know being able to put something out and like that's one of the reasons why you know people have asked like why am i going back to the dreamers podcast is because i didn't feel like uh the business with super joe pardo afforded me the ability to to be myself um i felt like i was trying to talk to a, a a segment of people that didn't necessarily want me to provide me as much as just you know the just the facts you know and 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 that kind of stuff and it's like that's not that's that's just not who i am um and and no matter how much i wanted to walk that fine line of like hey i like i'm the you know i'm not the guy that's in the suit but like on my site i'm in a button down shirt that you would never see me like you would never see me in that so it's 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 weird but like it you know going back to your podcast like there's a lot of things i can i feel like i can talk about i can play with the format more um i can have a lot more interesting guests that i wouldn't have necessarily been able to shoehorn into the into the old show or into the old show title even though it was still me, it's still the same show in theory. It's just a different, different, a different coat of paint, if you will, or a different cut shade of paint, if you will. Uh, oh, Kyle, painting what, reference. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Kyle, is, it Nick, what, is it Nick a painter? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what, what do you, what do you think? Well, okay, Nick, I, I've heard your show, man. You have, so much wisdom that comes out of your head that I imagine you probably all day long have that like, oh, here's an idea. I think maybe you just need to modify how you produce your show. And maybe it's something that maybe you don't go in a studio. Maybe it's all done on your phone. I think uh, uh, I said I met a lady this weekend at DC Podfest, uh, Molly, who runs iHeartMedia here in DC. She has an XM... 88 or something like that it's like a sure microphone that goes on the top of her cell phone uh mv88 mpa there you go yeah i just i just sold mine actually the but sound quality on it was crazy is it, it, it so, is crazy where you could use it to i mean uh i think uh, a dad uh, what's it called a phonic has a nice little recording app your little microphone do it on your phone while you're out painting houses you could do it right there like da -da -da -da, and then edit it later and you while you're have, driving in the car yeah and i know you have like i think you i think if i remember right you're gonna hit episode 200 and that'll be it but that i think would definitely improve your uh your sweet spot for trading consistent with your podcast because you'd have the ability to record shows on the fly out in the out in the world probably when you're having your best thoughts because i bet you after a hard day's work and or maybe the client didn't pay you or something you're just like oh i have this thought and then that's the time that's like the that's the Peter Griffin grind my gears kind of thing. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, sometimes your your thoughts like that, and some of your shows are like that, where I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel exactly the same way. So that's what it, that's my that's 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 Kyle's two cents. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. So so Brent says I strongly advocate uh, setting a bar, a low bar. <laughs> I, well, you know that sounds really bad, but the fact that matters is, is it's an opportunity to talk on the mic and it's an opportunity to get your thoughts out. And it's an opportunity to connect with the people who do enjoy your show and do enjoy you know what you produce. Um, you know, I, I like I was saying, like I, I mean, I produced a hundred um vlogs day like in a row like daily like i, I vlogged daily for a hundred days and uh I, you know i i had to record video and talking while i was driving into into the nonprofit, and i had to do you know whatever i could do to make it you know make it work um 
you know, I don't live in the city and there, you know, I, I live in the suburbs. So there isn't as much or as what I would think is as much interestingness about it. M meanwhile, you know, having like Sam and Leon from Australia, they're like, you have trees on your highway. That's insane. Like there, there's no trees around on our, our highway. Like that's something I wouldn't think that it's like that weird, but apparently it is. <laughs> um, I was like, what would, what else would you have? Or no, we just don't have trees. Like, Oh, yeah, okay. Um, so you never know what's, you know, what people are going to find interesting and all that. And so Brent says, uh, what if your show sucks and pod fading is a good thing? <laughs> oh well, boy. This is a, is a, is a, um, what's the term subjective or, uh, yeah, it's very subjective. So my, what sucks to you doesn't necessarily suck to other people. I have plenty of episodes. That I like, I didn't think this was went that well. And I actually get people to reach out and they say, Hey, look, that episode was really great. And I loved it. Well, this has this has everything to do with, uh, with with a couple different things. First off, of course, is imposter syndrome, where maybe you listen to other shows and you're like, "Oh, I don't sound that good," or "Or my voice isn't that good," or "I use you know crutch words too much." That might be that might be one thing that kind of hinders you. But uh, well, we did uh, Pod Fader, so we had this like acceptance criteria. Like step one was acceptance, where you had to require yourself to ask, you had to admit that your podcast was worth working on. So you do it like admit to yourself that did you really like it? Because if you don't like a podcast, you're not going to do you're not going to do good work on it. You have to really want to do the subject that it's about. You really, I mean, I hate a lot of people say, "Well, passion. You have to have passion." Well, passion equals energy, and if you don't have energy, if you don't have the thing to put into it, you're never going to build the passion. You can fake it for a while, but eventually it'll catch up to you. That's one. The other one was humility, and humility was step two. It required you to believe. Or to to tell yourself that you don't know everything about podcasting, which is possible that you think your show sucks, but it's not that your show sucks. Is that maybe you don't know that you have to have negative sixteen luffs, or you have to be this close on the microphone, or you even need a microphone like this, or maybe you didn't even plan your podcast out in advance. You have to like accept the fact that you don't know everything and go start thinking about well, what what do I not know, and maybe I need to like learn some new things. Go find some mentors. Or I need three up. pop filters on my mic. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I asked. You know, there's an internal one, right? <laughs> I asked Ralph Rivera about this, and uh, I think it was Marcus. Uh, I forget Marcus's last name. D something. Yeah. Uh, I said, hey, I do this because I'm a plosive guy. And he goes, oh, yeah, if you're a plosives guy, you know, this is like, uh, this is like, yeah, this is a, this is the plosive setup this for people like me. Yeah, because yep. I'm. I'm naturally loud on top of everything else. That's a, <laughs> and the third thing is clarity. And the clarity was, is that you get real honest feedback. So when it comes to your show, is it good or not? Don't ask mom. Don't ask Joe. Don't ask any of us. Go find people who have never heard of you or know anything about you. Go ask complete strangers. Go to coffee shops. I mean, go find people in the world that, that to ask them to listen to your show. Even just five minutes of it. We did this experiment at the DC podcast uh, meet, podcasters meetup a couple a uh, couple of months ago, and it was like the eighth grade talent show. So uncomfortable, and the reason it was uncomfortable is they put a speaker in the middle of the room, and they went around the room and says, "What's your podcast?" And Jennifer Crawford was like, "Okay," and they plug in your podcast into the little app and hit play on the speaker, and for five minutes, everybody in the room got to listen to your podcast talk about humility you learn real quick you can hear all your problems they just come screaming out at you and then people laugh at weird times and then people don't laugh when you thought they would laugh and you're like i don't know what's going on i feel so uncomfortable and then after they did the five minutes they went around the room and said would you like and would you not like about it wow that was it was it was it sounds like we should deal. do that at philly the philly oh, podcasters meetup i i so, will have to bring a speaker so it's uncomfortable anyway. but it's also so positive because you're in a safe place everyone there's a friend everyone there's another podcaster who's struggling with the same things you're struggling with and they get it because they're going to get a turn on the hot seat too and all of us think our podcasts are horrible and when you hear other people go, you know what? I like the way he started that show and I like his theme music and I like, uh, I like the way he banters back and forth and I like the way he cut to that person and I like the way he asked questions. But what did you not like? Well, 
he did a tub double intro. He did an intro, did music, then another intro, or he mm. five minutes of the show. We still don't know what the show is about, or or he and his friends were like, you know, what do you want to talk about? I don't. What do you want to talk about? You know, like just get to the point. All that stuff, super helpful, super helpful. In fact, if you take any podcasting course, that's the kind of stuff you pay for. But just by putting the microphone or the speaker in the middle of the room and everyone hear it, free advice. And you cannot, I mean, you couldn't hit price tag on that. That was probably, the, it was probably the best experience to fix my show was just having other people who I barely knew give me real criticism, especially on topics they didn't care about. Yeah. That's, well, that's at that point, it's delivery, entertainment value, attention yeah. holding, like it's all those like X factors that you, you know, you can't really rely on somebody who's already listening to the show that like loves, like already loves you. Do you know what I mean? Like it, yeah. that's not, it's not really that as helpful as finding like, how can I gain more listeners to for the, and, and not necessarily so I can artificially change myself to make them love me, like love me, darn it. You know, but more like, how do I make it so that they don't hang up after two seconds? Like what was it? I think Dave Jackson, I was Dave Jackson. It was like, he did a, was a rodeo about like, get to the point. It was like the podcast would get to the point, but then like five minutes in, he he was like, "Why don't you get to the point? Like, you still haven't talked about why we're here." Um, and exactly. I also think I also think it's important. Uh, there, there's a term uh, called the transatlantic accent, like the mid, like the the mid Atlantic transatlantic accent or something like that. <laughs> that that like how everybody in like the 20s or 30s like all talk. But I can't even do the voice. But <laughs> like think of like an old timey like newscaster person. Like that's. Everybody wanted to sound like that. The Hindenburg is going down. See, oh no, the Hindenburg is burning. Oh no, what's happening? I don't know what's going on. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Yeah, exactly yeah. like that. Yeah. And, uh, or should I say, exactly like that. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, you don't have to sound like everybody else. And, and, and people don't want you to sound like everybody else because they already have that person. They have that opinion. They have that, that take on it. So it's real. Oh, I'm hearing myself all of a sudden. Uh oh. Why am I hearing myself all of a sudden? Sound the problem is on your end. Testing one, two, three. Okay, uh, it happens. It's just that's what happens when it's live. Uh, yeah. So you you really want to do your best to to make yourself sound different. And I definitely think uh, we're gonna we're gonna incorporate this uh, that in there. So thank you, Jennifer Crawford, uh, for for making making this be you known. There you happen. go in the first place and philly podcaster meetup november 17th noon to three o'clock you should totally be there rsvp at indiepodcon.com slash meetup uh you know i at this time i want to i want to talk about um as 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 now all the listeners are i'm looking at the counter all the listeners are gone all the live <laughs> listeners are gone uh but that's okay we, them we, off. Get, <laughs> we get uh we get downloads you know in the tens of tens Woo. uh you know after the fact but the views the views are forever the views on facebook and and uh on uh, YouTube and uh, the, well, there's a couple different channels on Facebook. They, they, these, the views, no, they just don't stop. But uh, the, uh, for anyone who, who doesn't know, we are running uh, a weight loss game. It's four weeks. It's just $10 and you win money. So the goal <laughs> is to lose 4% of your, of your body weight in four weeks. And you will win more money than you put in as long as you meet that goal. Nobody doesn't win. Like apparently, so we're using dietbet.com. And apparently in their in their FAQ, it says like if everybody wins, they just don't take a cut. Like, so like if everybody went, like they just won't take their cut of the money. Are they philanthropists? Which, Is that kind of how they work this? Well, no, because I guess so many people don't you know they don't so play in the odds yeah okay. yeah they're playing the odds but i mean i i think it's really cool i mean i'm sure it doesn't happen very often i think it even says that it doesn't happen very often but if it does happen they they're willing to you know in the in the spirit of letting you know making sure that everybody gets their money and lo loses weight so that their product works they're willing to just chalk it up to you know uh, marketing, I guess, which is great. Uh, so anyway, we're using dietbet.com. Uh, I want to lose weight. I'm, I'm tired of, of being fat. 
uh like really <laughs> tired i mean i have i've run races like i'm not like i was thin at one point like you can see uh you can't really see it but there's um you can kind of see the the, the 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 medals there next to the hat um, are those marathons yeah they're they're yeah. uh half marathons and marathon oh here we go it's this this is too <laughs> the, the the wire is like killing me here it's too short but you can kind of over oh no help joe yeah. he fell over <laughs> so so yeah so i want to get back to to running races and all that and it all starts with you know losing losing some weight so i i wanted to put together a uh a, a weight loss game for us uh in the indie pod community uh to to be able to make that happen so I think we have like seven or eight eight of us that are are supposed to be you know putting our money in. We're starting on the on Monday, uh, this upcoming Monday, and it runs for four weeks. So yeah, it runs through Thanksgiving, but you know, ten bucks is not a lot, and that's two cups no. of coffee. And if you're trying to quit, you're trying to lose weight. Not drinking two Starbucks is probably not a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably a, not. <laughs> I'm a large white chocolate mocha kind of guy. So and I'm sure they're probably like ten thousand calories in that. And that's my number one thing. I ride my mountain bike everywhere, but because I drink S Starbucks coffee all the time and I get this, like I get this, like this chub right here, this little bit of like man weight in the, your later forties that will not go away. I mean, my legs are strong. My arms are strong, but this little pudge right here, it's, 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 it's my bane. I gotta, but I mean, 10 bucks I mean, thinking about this is, is, is interesting because there, there's some accountability measures they take to make yes. sure that you're doing it. I think there's like a, a video or you take a picture of yourself. Uh, you and, take pictures of, of yourself and the weight. Um, and, and it's all about, you know, it's all about the percentage. Right. That, uh, if you, if you really dedicate yourself over four weeks, you could healthily lose, I mean, 4% and win money. <laughs> yeah. And win money. <laughs> then you can buy more Starbucks with it, but I would say body fat is. I mean, or maybe like, put it towards a new microphone or what is that like or, 20, or two 20 more pounds? pop filters because you can't have <laughs> enough of those. <laughs> you gotta, get like a mask. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> be like be like Bane from, from the Batman, right? Like, oh, I find your lack of faith disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> but the uh the Bane the, the Muppet or Bane the <laughs> I don't know. I, I like four percent. Was that 20, 25 pounds? No. Well, is no. It less than that. What's it's the, less than that? So, like, is it it's four um, percent body body fat or four percent of your? Uh, it's four percent of your weight. Uh, that might even be less. So it's yeah. So for me, I think it's about ten, uh, like nine pounds. Oh, nine pounds. No, so so in my case, it's eleven. It's like eleven pounds. Okay, for anybody that wants to go and do the math to figure <laughs> out. <laughs> well, you're taller uh, than me, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, you know, so that, I I don't think that's unreasonable, especially no. In uh, if, if you start work, you know, if you intentionally start working out and trying to win win some money, I want to win some money, lose some weight, and and be motivated and to motivate other people, and that's uh, really what the goal here is. Is, is it, yeah. you know, the money doesn't really matter. It's just about getting yourself in in shape um, and and feeling better about yourself well, and, and your situation. Think about our age is the the no salt diets creeping up on us. The uh, the diabetes is creeping up on us. At some point, they're going to tell you to stop eat, you're having sugar. So you're going to have to have that that conversation. You're going to have to have your first colonoscopy. All these kind of like health related things. You're like right on the edge where your body is strong enough to fight it all off, and almost where you're about to lose a fight. You're somewhere in that world, and losing a couple pounds and getting a couple bucks on top of that because you could buy some some you know some new pants new shirts i mean you're gonna lose an inch a couple inches yeah you're you gonna need some pair of jeans pants. yeah yeah i don't see how you this seems like a, this seems, it seems like there you can't lose no no so if you want to get involved um the 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 time to do it is like over the next i think it's like two days or so let me see i'm just pulling i just up. love how you plan this for the next four weeks do you know what happens in three weeks uh thanksgiving does thanksgiving. But that's, that's all of the Whoa. challenge so it starts in five days but you got to be the the way in let me um let me share my screen here so the way in is um 
Hey, you like that little little trick there, Kyle? I like that. Uh, so yeah, so we have we have two people in already. Me and Eric Hunley uh, are already in. And again, for ten bucks, you too can start losing weight. Uh, so the weigh-in starts in two days. So you got to do your picture and all that. Um, and and you know, I, so this is this like here's the plan, right? So I want to do this. I want to help motivate other people and and get you know weight loss myself uh, or get back to the way I, you know, was uh, just a few years ago. And uh, the goal is to start our own running team. Like that's, 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 that's my, where I'm thinking, like, let's get people, you know, losing weight and get involved and then force them to run marathons and have marathons, uh, or motivate them. I should say to every, at, uh, at Podfest down in Orlando, uh, there's a guy named Sean Yesser, who does the uh, the Podfest Fun Run? It's like at six o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. Everyone gets up to go run in Orlando, and if, if you know anything about Orlando, it starts off at like seventy degrees, and at like it's at six o'clock, and at six o one, it's like ninety eight degrees with one hundred percent humidity. So you make it like twenty feet, and you're already you're already the things are like you're yeah, you, yeah, you're already ready to die. But uh, so there, there have been some podcast or efforts to do runners clubs in certain areas, but nothing nothing significant so maybe it's time maybe it's time there was it sounds like another t-shirt oh, have you tried <laughs> run bet make it make running a habit make there you go they habit. already yeah. see they already know like, they already they know. know like they knew they they knew what i was thinking um it was, you know let's get let's get people uh you know healthy and healthier and uh feeling better about themselves uh, as a whole and um then you know prod them to go run <laughs> long distances uh so anyway yeah so if you want to join it's indiepodcon.com slash loser it starts in like a little over two days with the weigh-in it's only ten dollars i don't get any of that money unless i win you know the the uh, the bets you can read all about it uh on their website as well <sighs> anyway, do um <laughs> let's see here. Do we have uh is so oh we already answered the the if your show sucks, pod fading is a good thing. Uh hey, sometimes it's, it's better just to start another show. Yeah, you just burn out on the idea and you just need to go do something different for a while and then come back. I mean, there is there is a strategy behind that where you kind of let it sit for a while and see if anyone cares. And sometimes you'll find that your podcast gets renewed life because it, new people find it for the first time and you'll get these like spikes and downloads and someone will send you an email going, I just listened to every episode you have and it changed my life. I've had that happen twice. I've had two people, one in Oklahoma and another lady someplace out in Texas called me and said, that, or sent me an email saying, I listened to every one of your episodes and then I went and did a trail run all by myself with a, an event set up registration 150 people showed up it was the best thing that ever happened to me in fact it, it wow. like it funded like a bible church out in oklahoma so it those are really cool like High because five, of my podcast man. stories yeah i know that's one of the oh, where we got oh, other side other side ah, there there we <laughs> but that podcast i haven't done in two years so it just it's it's 50 episodes just sits there almost like an encyclopedia and the, everything's evergreen but will i go back to it maybe I mean, maybe next year I'll go, you know what? Maybe it's time I've, I've renewed interest. I kind of like put it aside for a while and was doing something else. So if you pod fade, sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes it's just a natural ending because the, the, I see the, almost like the yin and yang of podcasting. Starting a podcast is one of it and ending a podcast is another. Eventually podcasts mm -hmm. end. They have to end. Nothing can last forever. Look at TV. TV is a perfect example. All those shows that you want that you love that come to an end. Sometimes the end isn't great. I mean, Game of Thrones, perfect example. Sometimes the endings are awesome, you know, like ER, where everything's all sad and emotional at the very end. But that's the that's the thing about pod, fed, uh, pod fading is it's not the end, it's a journey. So you can go from podcasting to pod fade and then go, you know what? I have another idea, and then do it again and do it again. If you go through any conference and go up and ask somebody, how many shows have you pod faded? It's more than one. It's yeah. more than one. I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah, I've pod faded uh, birth. I mean, that had a natural ending because we had our, our first kid, but uh, 
it was the it was a journey leading up to becoming parents for the first time and and it was it was a lot of fun it was uh we had like interviews with our parents and stories and things that i weaved in in through the through the show um there was living the dream podcast uh that that pod faded after like third almost like 30 some episodes um uh let me see there was uh for a little while until i had amy j pick it back up um so yeah so it, it i mean it happens uh and, and it's an evolutionary right. process it's just like tv if you think about uh yeah, sequels absolutely. you know like buffy the vampire slayer spawned angel which then you know <laughs> you, you get to these like spin-offs kind of things you know you have yeah. the ability those, to do like, your, your creative you know, space. Buffy is still going on, right? Like it's these, these show, Seinfeld ends. Like there's shows that end, uh, and sometimes end prematurely. Um, I mean, there's plenty of shows I'm sure you could think of. Like everybody Firefly. loves that. Yeah, that's the show I was going <laughs> to say. Like, I've never watched an episode of, but everybody, everybody loves the. I mean, Family Guy almost almost pod faded yep. well before its time, you know, because was, they were like, yeah, we're we're good, and then all of a sudden they brought it back because they realized they made a, a boo-boo <laughs> even Buffy the vampire slayer had that problem where where it was was a usa or something had it and then they canceled it and cw picked it up which is a mm-hmm. warner brothers station so these these happen all the time in normal media when it happens in movies when it happens in tv everyone's like okay that's normal when it happens in podcasting they're like oh you pod faded oh you know the scarlet letter or the p gets stamped on you not true <laughs> it's a journey and you sometimes you have to to pod fade a show before you find the show that you were meant to do. Sometimes it's just the way it is. Yep. You may do 50 episodes of a show you hate and then you're like, I can't do this anymore. And you stop that. And that inspires you to have the show that you love. And that becomes like 14 years worth of podcasting. So it's a creative process. And I, I love the, the, what's it? The, there's the, I don't know who said it. But they say kill your darlings, and sometimes ending shows that maybe even you loved or just like, like Tom was saying earlier, that are you know doesn't know what to do with it yet or doesn't know where it needs to become. You know, maybe it's time to become something different. Maybe it's time to launch a whole new show called instead of one kid, call it one, call it the three kid show, right? Maybe that's maybe now's the time to have a break. So I love this medium because. It's so creative. Everyone wants to focus on tech. Everyone wants to say, you know, microphones and audio engineering or something like that. I love the creative side of this because you can do anything. This medium is like 1930s radio all over again. You know how much cool stuff came out of the 30s and 40s in radio? It's You have to go back and listen to some of it. It's like, wow, that was amazing to hear. Was it Orson Welles or H. Yeah, or Orson yeah. Welles doing that kind of stuff? You're like, that was the first time that ever happened ever. And people forgot all, all that stuff. And now podcasting comes around and people are like, oh, it's it's so new and inventive. It's like, no, there's a lot of stuff that's already taken place that they all pod faded. All those radio shows all pod faded. If you want to use the radio faded, right? There's a whole lot of creative. Yeah, we, we, we don't have years. like, we don't have like radio dramas didn't continue on like through survive TV or anything like that. So the shadow yeah, <laughs> or flash Gordon or a couple of those, like some of them, yep. some of them get second lives. I mean, look at Hollywood. They're constantly <laughs> going back to the barrel to scrape yeah. the bottom of it. So yeah, <sighs> this is a creative medium where you can do cool things like that and experiment and have fun. And most people forgive you for it. So give it a try. Absolutely. So Kyle, before we wrap up here, uh, tell everybody how they can get in contact with you. Reach out. So Tim and I run GagglePod at GagglePod.com, and there we do a lot of the the design side of things. So if you're looking to start a show, don't know quite know how to make the idea work, we do everything before the microphone. That's kind of our our bread and butter is we like all the stuff that comes for that. And if you think buying a microphone is how you start a podcast, that's step eight. There are seven steps and maybe even more and some you know ten thousand other different pieces between that before you do that. And that's kind of our, our little kind of bread and butter thing on the side. We uh, we have the podcast Pod Rect, just like the ED at the end, Pod Rect at podrect.com. Uh, that was our podcast on podcasting. So a lot of times Tim and I will will grab topics and take them apart. Usually it's topics that all podcasters struggle with. So it has a lot of good meat on the bone and it's a good time. And the best thing about Pod Rect is all our 
outtakes and weird faux pas and bizarre things that we come up with in our heads, we put at the end of the show. So if you listen to the end of the show, every show we produced has something. <laughs> some of that stuff is like, I can't believe I put that in the podcast. But if you don't go to the end, you don't get to listen to us sing happy 14th birthday to Dave Jackson <laughs> in a bizarre way. Or even better, when we had Dave Jackson on the show, I got him to do Binky and the Wiz voices at the end and i put that as a clip at the end of the show where he goes oh padre man what the heck is that oh it's so awesome it was like it was like a dream come true so and that's that's us so we live in fredericksburg virginia so if you're ever in the fredericksburg area it's about 40 miles south of dc so i was summer. there i was at your chuck e cheese sir and i feel oh yes i was able to see either right. of you now we were only there for like an hour <laughs> But we're the suburb of a suburb of a suburb. So we're right on the, the Rappahannock River edge. And we live in the middle of, of Civil War world. I mean, there are like four or five of the biggest Civil War battles happened right outside my front door. So, and we have a meetup and we call it the Virginia Podcasters uh, Association or the POTA. And we have that once a month. So if you're in town or if you're a local Virginia or DC resident and want to uh, want to talk to some podcasters, Look us up on meetup.com of you know, Vapoda or GagglePod or Podrect. We're in those three worlds, and all the emails go to the same place. So it doesn't matter what you write. You'll find us. One thing I want to add real quick that I, I – so I hadn't really announced this yet, but – um I you know you were saying that like you know get buying the microphone is like step seven or eight uh in starting a podcast so i'm actually right now writing the how to start a podcast ultimate guide uh for the excuse me for the indie pod the uh, indiepodcon.com site and uh the tech is actually like the shortest part part of the <laughs> of the of the guide so like i'm like almost six thousand words into it and it and i mean if it's if the tech part is i don't know like a thousand words i'd be surprised like it's it's like it's real front heavy in the creation part and it's it's starting to get heavier in the promotion part than actually it's, it's probably mostly it's mostly in the in the in the beginning part right and then the tech is like a little bit bit you know a little like right there and then the promotion part is is pretty heavy too but uh but yeah it's um oh so regular is saying turn that that into a course in thinkific so um i yeah, have exactly. a course well i have a course already called uh uh, uh simple podcasting or something to that effect and it's it's available off my website superjoepar.com but um and it's all video based and it's like 30 four videos or something they're all relatively short and it shows you how to like basically start uh, get your podcast up and running for like the least amount of money like uh, virtually possible um with like free software how to host your podcast for free how to like everything uh is free without using like a uh, anger or something like that um but yeah, so I, you know, so I'm writing, writing this, this, this post and, and you just reminded me like, Hey, like, <laughs> you know, I'm not the only one. Cause I almost feel like wrong for not having more in the tech, but I'm going, I plan on writing like subsequent posts and then like linking well, them. It's, it's like, situational like, podcasting right though is, is it, it's that thing that Dave Jackson's all the time. He's like, how much, what do I need to buy for a podcast? Well, it depends. So we talk, we talk in our in our meetup. We talk all the time about situational podcasting. It's like, what's your situation? I'm a I'm I'm one person in a closet. Well, you don't need a twelve channel mixer. That's yeah. right out, right? So you already can like downsize their expectations real quick just by what their situation is. And that we we talk about this all the time is is well before you even buy anything, you know, know what the heck you're going to talk about first, and then the equipment thing is almost like. There, there, there's a religious war in that kind of sense. Is like, you know, well, this is an Audio Technica 2100, and it's the only microphone you should ever buy. Like, that's not true either. Because like, if you go on to, what is it, the the guy at the PodFest who has like the 15 microphones to hear what you sound like, for some reason, the expensive that's ones. That's Sean. Yeah. You, uh, the expensive microphones, I don't sound very good on them because I'm very bassy. And then I get on the, the, the cheaper ones, and I sound pretty good. I'm like, that's, did not know that. That's strange. It's kind of, I really wanted the high up here 40 and I don't sound very good on it. So he's like, Oh, I thought you tune it. And like, okay, whatever. But that's, I love the, the, the tech thing because sometimes it's kind of like, look, just, just buy this. 
And that's really what a lot of podcasters just want to know. Just like, what do I, what do I buy? Just buy this and you'll be okay. And then here's how you set it up. And then you're fine. And then go do like a hundred shows. And at the end of hundred shows, you'll know what to add and what yeah. doesn't work and what pieces of this equipment are garbage and you what pieces Googling work. other equipment yeah. and like, you know, you figuring learn. out what the differences, yeah. and what to look for and all that. Yeah. Get like, the basics. Why do I sound like this? Or why does this work like this? And yeah, get the um, basics enough to get your voice on there to hear what you sound like, because 90% of podcasting has got nothing to do with this thing. It's got everything so, to do with show. So you, yeah. So you'll be happy to know that in the tech part, I only recommend two microphones and one of them is ear pods. <laughs> so there's, the other one is the ATR 2100 microphone. If you want to spend, you know, 60 bucks, go buy that. Uh, if not, use your ear pods that came with your probably well, is, came with the iPhone that you might This have. microphone is the F-150 of microphones. You know, it's a truck, yeah. you know, it doesn't get very good gas mileage, but that's okay. Carry some stuff and, you know, some people can sit in it, but you know, can you like, is it a luxury vehicle? No. You know, is it, is it, you know, something that you, that's sporty? No. It's a luxury vehicle to some people. I you mean, right. come on, you live further south than I do. <laughs> well, around here, people we up here speak. treat it like it's like the, you know, the, the, the limousine. <laughs> I live in Fredericksburg. We call them Frednecks. So <laughs> you got the, it's either big trucks or Audis for some reason. I don't know why that is, <laughs> but it's the, tr it's the truth. Sometimes you just need enough to get you started because show prep, show design, show production. That's where, that's where the difficulty is. Um, and, yeah, no, I, I yeah. absolutely agree. And, and Regor to answer your, you know, to fully answer your question about the course and think like, that sounds awesome. Uh, but I'm doing this so that people find the conference. That's the goal. So, uh, so yeah, cool. Like, I mean, selling on, I guess I assume I've never actually bought anything for Thinkific, but selling a course <laughs> cool. Uh, but I'm much more interested in selling people coming to the conference and having a great time and joining this Facebook group and joining our community, our icon community and, uh, you know, being a part of this, that's, that's really trying to get more eyeballs for, um, then like, Ooh, I can make an extra, like, I don't know how much think if fix stuff goes for, but you're a connector. That's your, that's yeah, your, that's I've, your I've zone. Of, what's that called? Your zone of genius. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Cliff <laughs> Ravencraft. There, I got it. I said it. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> By the way, nice shirt. Uh, I don't know if anyone's <laughs> noticed, but we are wearing uh, on Neil red versus blue. Shirt. Red versus blue, but I don't have the the band like you do. Where oh, it's yeah. a Snapcon. Mine, mine came after the fact. Uh, this is this is vintage. That is vintage. This is, <laughs> this is not vintage at this point. Uh, it's just part of the two, three, four threads collection that, uh, that's out. So, um, but yes. And regular says that sounds like a great plan. I think so. I've been in dump, like I said, but I'm almost at 7,000 words. Plus I have like a ton of YouTube videos. I'm actually putting some of the, uh, MapCon talks in there. Like, so I'm uploading them to YouTube so that people can watch them. So it's not just me. Very like, cool you know, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's them. Um, you know, it's, it's people that are in the sections that make, it makes sense to be in. It's almost so, like yeah. you're creating like a podcast museum and you're the curator of all the content you have from people at your conference. You yeah. plug them in the right spots. It's like, you know, here are some things. And by the way, here is Kyle talking about that thing. Right. Perfect. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, and then at, like, like I said, at some point I'll do like more advanced ones and it's like, Hey, you, you found this and here's where you can go find out. But like, here's the real, like, here's the deeper tech side. And maybe, um, you know, maybe I'll bring in some, some other people. I'll also use these, these talks too. Right. So, uh, the indie pod podcast, like putting those videos in there as well, so that people have more, uh diversity of of content to consume when they're looking for the ultimate how to start a podcast guide that isn't buy my course <laughs> uh <laughs> you know instead it's buy my buy my ticket to 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 this conference but but you know that it's worth it yeah i think i think it's, it's worth, worth it. it i mean i enjoy writing i mean i i don't i mean i've been blogging since like 96 so uh, I, I do enjoy, even though I don't get to do it as often as I, as I'd like to, and having this opportunity to, you know, again, revamping the podcast conference to indie PodCon, uh, is really helped 
a lot of a lot of the growth that's already come and and i i what i expect from these articles that i'm going to be writing and, and curating uh you know i i expect a lot more to to come out of it so so that's a bit of what i wanted to exp you know put out there and explain uh when i was talking about at the very beginning like an hour and 15 minutes ago you know some of the stuff that i have going on so at this point it has Very been cool. an hour and 15 minutes thank you thank you thank you i'm pointing in the wrong direction thank you <laughs> thank you kyle um and <laughs> there we go i forget everything is left is right it's like uh it's like it's like a, a southpaw the my a southpaw yeah. is that, is it? the boxer so, the so we gotta have you back on at some point here with uh with your with your co host Tim who was supposed to be joining us tonight, uh but that just fell through the cracks. I hope Tim, I hope you're uh, wherever you are right now. I hope you're all right. And, I heard uh, from him as he seems to getting his stuff uh, stuff squared away, so he'll be okay. Good, good, yeah. good, good, good. So we'll we'll get this rescheduled and and have you and him on uh, maybe in a couple of months here. Uh, with that said, my next guest isn't next Wednesday, and we're actually going to be doing a, another. I know it's been a, a couple of weeks since we did one. We're going to be doing another Saturday session here on the Indie Pod. Uh, yeah, the I keep one the Indie Pod <laughs> podcast. Uh, <clears throat> at least I'm not saying Mapcom. You know, the middle. You gotta retrain your brain. That's all you have to do. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, we have a special episode on Saturday. We have the hall of famer dave jackson we've mentioned his name so many times on the show on this episode that's He'll a running joke in uh, pod <laughs> rec is every time we say his name he owes us 100 bucks he came up to at dc pod fest and says i think i owe you like 900 dollars." probably but you're gonna be <laughs> you're gonna have to have him do the binky and the whiz voice when he's on your show you gotta have him do binky that he and the oh whiz yes voice. it's like episode 400 on his podcast and it's just something he did as an experiment Oh, it's so hilarious. I will I you know what? Let me <laughs> let me write that down here because I will I will absolutely forget between now and Saturday with all the things I got going on. Binky and the Wiz voice for yeah. Dave Jackson. Okay. okay. So, so <clears throat> yeah, so we'll be doing Saturday at 8 30 a.m. Eastern. Ooh. Yeah. So before he goes live on his show, we ask the podcast feature. coach. Yeah, you'll get double double the Dave. Nice. Um, okay, so it'll be a, it'll be a lot of fun. We'll be talking uh, podcasting. I don't know what topic we're going to talk about just yet. I might dig into my podcasting guide and see if I can pull something out of that, so I could <laughs> kind of slip that in there. Uh, in fact, I might. I think. I think this episode will probably be towards the end of that guide. Like, because I I do mention you and Tim and Podrecked in the guide. Um, uh, like briefly in the beginning talking about like why you need to do all these steps and figure out like who your avatar is and what your, your why is and all that stuff so that you don't end up you know being the sub you know the subject of a pod wrecked episode <laughs> uh something to that effect so uh yeah so we'll, i'll probably try to slip this in uh either in the beginning or towards the end when i talk you know talk more about uh, probably in the beginning i'll just th throw it in there um and yeah all the other things we got going on uh let's see regor says he has like millions upon millions of downloads of his on his podcast yeah, yeah dave does yeah he's a hall of famer he yep. is and he's got uh, what like four podcasts going right now he's got ask the podcast coach school podcasting uh uh, podcast rodeo. roundtable he's he's, oh, he's a guest he's a co-host on he's got podcast rodeo and now he just relaunched uh build a better dave for uh the nad pod promo pomo the national podcast post month he's doing that every day so he yeah. at the podcast he accidentally shaved off his mustache and he does an episode where he talks about how that happened <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna run through all of these things. I know we it was like 20 minutes ago that I asked you to, uh, you know, tell people how they connect with you. Um, but I'm gonna run through a bunch of these. So like, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. It's all at IndiePodCon. Uh, you can join us September 24th to 26th, 2020, IndiePodCon.com slash register. If you pop in discount code IPP, yeah, you know me then you will get your 10% off your ticket. The uh, uh, Monetize Your Podcast course is now available for sale on 
the indiepodcon.com slash register uh this is november 17th philly podcaster meetup november 17th no- noon to 3 p.m rsvp your spot go to indiepodcon.com slash meetup uh if you want to be a guest on this show well i don't actually think we i don't think we actually have any spots available because it's all the way booked i think till may but there might be one or two spots available i'm not positive so you can go to indiepodcon.com slash guest book your spot to come and be a guest host on the indie pod podcast i would keep you wanting to say it. con you did it now you pulled it out I didn't think did about it. it if you <laughs> didn't see the vlog yet kyle i'm looking at I you will see it. i will uh, see it i pulled up uh, on my browser right here it's ready to go go, go, go to indiepodcon.com slash vlog go check it out leave a comment uh hit the like button do all that all that crazy stuff um Join our group, indiepodcon.com slash group. Get your podcasting questions answered. Get to watch this video. Get to meet and all, hang out with awesome people like like this guy over here. Uh, I'm posting daily every single day, uh, a, you know, a different conversation starter. And some of these, it's like 20, 30 comments. It's it's kind of it's kind of ridiculous, actually. Um, super honored that people want to give their their input, and and I think it's really valuable for people to uh, be able to search up that information after the fact. So it's not necessarily you that has to ask that question, but you can go through and look at the answers later and search them all up. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, Icon Six in the Podcon Six is coming back to Swedesboro, New Jersey. So that is exciting and different uh, than last year when we were in Atlantic City. Again, you can get 10% off your code. Uh, use discount code IPP. And if you want to sponsor an episode, this, this is the second to last thing. If you want to sponsor an episode of the Indie Pod podcast, I almost said con, uh, the Indie Pod podcast, better. go to IndiePodCon.com slash partners. And you can check out the uh, the media kit that we got, and in like one of the one of the last like three or four pages, um, you can you can uh, find out how much it costs. And reach out to me if you if you know if you're working with a certain kind of budget, reach out to me. We'll make something happen. I'm really looking forward to working with a lot of partners this year. Um, uh, oh, what was I going to say? There was a <laughs> there was a question I was going to ask you, Kyle. Um, Oh uh, man, I forget what it was. It was like on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, uh, if you want to lose weight, uh, I want to lose weight. So I I have pledged uh, the ten dollars for a four week game on Diet Bet. So it's where you lose money or lose money, where you lose weight and gain <laughs> money. That's uh, you get that fat, fat wallet. Uh, so you you pledge ten dollars, and you if you lose four uh, percent of your body weight then you will gain money. Uh, go to IndiePodCon.com slash loser. It starts in like two days. Uh, this is the first of many. We have, I think, like six or seven people uh, that are supposed to be on board. So uh, now that I got it set up properly with the right amount, uh, I'm looking forward to to, to getting, in, getting in there and motivating and help motivate uh, all of you to get healthier uh, in, like myself. Um, not that I am, but want to get, need to get there. Right. It's a charity. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for sticking it out an hour and 22 minutes Woo. this week. It has been so much fun. Kyle, thank you so much for taking the time tonight. Oh, thank uh, you for having me you on your show. This guest. was awesome. Of course. I hope you had a great time. Yeah, this is fun. It, it was fun. I, I always have a great time and, um, uh omg so many pods you can even store you things in pods and now you can cast them <laughs> that is from regular i am losing my voice i am it's very I, meta it, very it, meta. It, it, it is very meta it's kind of like the picture i took uh right where you were sitting at the table of uh of oh of, yeah the picture of the yeah. picture within a picture within a picture, the picture yeah <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. All right, everybody. It's been a magical night. Uh, nobody ended up in the hospital here. So, um, yeah, that's, that's Think, a, ho- hopefully, well, the night's still not, it's night's still young. So we'll find we'll jamboree, track, and cross country. That's, that's your child's future. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 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 He needs to get, he needs to grow out of this. Um, all right, everybody. Have a great, 
Well, I would say have a great rest of the week. I will see you all Saturday morning, 8.30 a.m. with the Hall of Famer, Dave Jackson. Take care.